And so tonight we are in the book of John, chapter 13, and we are uh, going to launch off in verse 37, 36 rather. So go ahead and you can make your way there. Welcome everybody that's joining us tonight. I thank you for being with us. We are launching off in the book of John, chapter 13, starting in verse 36. Is everybody there? Amen. And so here we are. We're going to read 36 through the end of the chapter 38. And the word of the Lord reads, Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. Verse 38, Jesus answered him, will you lay down your life for my sake? Most assuredly, I say to you, the rooster shall not crow till you have denied me three times. And so tonight as I'm speaking, I want to talk to you about Peter's request, what this teaches us, what this shows us, and really it's about the process and the reason for the process. Come on, can somebody say, I need to go through the process? Amen. And can the person next to him tell him, hey, and you're going to appreciate the process when it's done. Come on, because the process brings the anointing. So even with regard to us in this church, this is a place that is equipping the saints and pursuing Jesus while expecting revival. Remember, the mission of this church is to reach, to disciple, and to raise up. Authentic revival is going to bring everyone into the fold of God's kingdom, into the fold of his sheep, right? And revival is going to come. Check this out. Revival is going to come in the midst of the dead. Come on, it's not revival if something's not risen to life. Now, not all death is bad. Remember, Jesus teaches us, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it produces nothing. So we must be a people ready to die to self who love our life, not who, not who love not our life, even unto death, as the scripture says it. We've got to be these people. This has got to be the hunger that is within us. When Ray said it, when Ray was sharing with me, he he's told me his testimony a few times and he shared it tonight. Just about being hungry, about being desperate, about begging God. See, now some people would say, now, Brother Ray, we don't beg God, we're children. Well, praise God, but I know I've been that hungry. I know I've been that hurt. I know I've had those chains that tight around my wrists, around my neck. The devil's, you know, trying to keep his foot on my throat. But you know what? I've been hungry enough for the Lord to continue to cry out for him and just stay there asking and petitioning and wearing down these hounds of hell so that I could be free of their grip. Can somebody say amen? So I agree with you, Brother Ray. What you taught tonight was the real deal because we're trying to reach some people. I I'm trying to engage some people that are hungry for what God is going to do. Brother Benjamin said it tonight. He said, we're getting to the point where maybe a half hour is not enough prayer. Maybe an hour is not enough prayer. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that if you pray for less than an hour, you're not going to make it, okay? But I'm saying that when God shows up, I want to be the one that was tugging at him. I want to be the one that was in his midst. I want to be uh, approaching, boldly coming to the throne of grace so close to the Lord that when he really wants to return he's got to say son let's go down come on I'm just talking here but it's going to take the process Peter in the book of John chapter 13 approaches the Lord and says this Lord where are you going Jesus answers him, where I'm going, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterward. <clears throat> In other words, he was going to get the promise, but it wasn't for this moment. In the question, Peter is not only asking where, but we know, right, the Lord reads our hearts. And so we know that Peter is also asking, can I go with you? In, in, in verse 36, Simon Peter very simply says, Lord, where are you going? But Jesus tells him, where I'm going, you can't follow, and you sh but you shall follow me afterward. 
So the Lord knows that in Peter's heart is the desire to just stay with Jesus, stay right next to Jesus, not do nothing else but, but what he's been doing with Jesus. But I want to say this tonight, and this is what really is I've been meditating on these verses, is you see Peter is still stuck in just a audience mentality. Peter is stuck, is still in this place of, of even how the Israelites were in a slave mentality. Remember in the Old Testament, the book of Genesis, the, the Israelites who had just been set free were yelling at Moses and accusing Moses and saying, Moses, it was better when we were in bondage. Does anybody remember that? See, because that's a slave's mentality. A slave thinks it's better back in Egypt because Pharaoh supplies the food. They forget that they were put under a heavy yoke. They forget the requirement and the demands of a wicked slave master. And all they think about is I didn't have to produce anything. I wasn't responsible for anything. Come on, anybody know anybody that thinks like that? Because I know I have a tendency to sometimes. I just want things easy. Remember, Peter is, is, is still in this mentality of being a member of the audience, a pew, I mean a bench warmer. Come on. You call somebody a pew warmer, they flip out. But a pew warmer or a bench warmer, this is Peter. Here's the thing. The Lord doesn't say, oh, you sinful, foolish man. No. But in this moment, Peter is a, a pew warmer. Peter has a slave or a servant mentality. And Peter is what we would call today in America a consumer. Catch that? Just like Israel in the wilderness with that slave consumer mindset, slaves have everything given to them. Consumers, here's the thing, slaves have everything, like they just have things given to them, they're not responsible. Consumers think that everything is for them. Ooh, you know what, Sister Joey? I just don't like that fragrance you use. Next time you go shopping, Sister Joey, why don't you buy the, the banana flavor uh, scent for the women's restroom? Sister Joey, I don't like, bro, Pastor, I don't like the type of tissue that you buy. So next time, Pastor, you go shopping, why don't you buy four-ply Charmin with the, with the lotion on it, Pastor? Next time you go shopping for the church. Come on. Consumer thinks everything's about them. Right? And here's the deal. I'll be real with you. I love to make this a hospitable place for God's people and for the presence of God. But sometimes things are just out of my control. And sometimes people are just crazy. I'll just, I'm just English here tonight. But Peter is still stuck in this audience member, this pew warming, this slave or this consumer mindset. And all of those are selfish. But I want to tell you something, and this is what Jesus is. Jesus doesn't teach Peter this right now, but the reason Jesus holds Peter off from following him and to going where Jesus was about to go is because through the process, King Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, was going to make Peter a producer, a son of God, walking in authority, bringing forth the kingdom of God, where creation miracles are happening, where the sick are healed, where the dead are raised, where the power of God is evident, not because Jesus is walking around in the flesh, but because Peter is completely submitted to Jesus, even when no one else can see him. Did anyone read the proverb of the day? Me and the men did this morning. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 15 says this, drink water from your own cistern and running water from your own well. Just continue to think on that today as I'm digging in the word and it's like, wow. The Lord has called us to be these that, are, that, that possess things, not for the sake of like, hey, I'm the, but for the sake of blessing the kingdom, for the sake of, of, of bringing people into the kingdom. For the sake of being a blessing to others. Uh, what I'm saying tonight 
is this saints is why we hold on. This saints is why we'll go through the fire. This saints is why we will stand when our trial, when we're being tried, when we're going in the furnace, when we're being persecuted, when we're frustrated, when we're tired, when we're fasting. This is why we'll stand because God is going to make us those that can be good stewards who will possess and people who will produce to bring glory to God. The truth is, I can't produce the anointing, but I can seek the one who gives it. And when there's an anointing on my life, it's not so that I can be comfortable. It's so that I can be used. It's so that I can be pliable. It's so that Jesus can be lifted up and glorified. Come on, somebody. It's so the word of God can be confirmed. But it is our responsibility to go through the process. Understand, Peter wanted to skip the process. But the reason is, he had no idea about the process. And some of us, maybe you don't have any idea about the process. Maybe you're saying, Pastor, I'm not ready to go back to church yet. Pastor, I'm going to wait till COVID's over. Pastor, I'm not going to do this. Pastor, I'm not ready to do that. But the reality is, we are in a perfect climate for the glory of God to be seen through every crazy man, woman, and child who is just crazy enough to believe what this thing right here says. Onion skin paper between leather binding, but it's the power of God in it. Come on, I'm talking tonight about God wanting us to go through the process, God not being afraid of the process. Yes, Peter did not want the process. He literally asked Jesus, hey, is there any way I can just go with you and be with you and do the me and you thing? Is, can, is there any way that can happen? Now, I'm not preaching against intimacy, against worship, against loving Jesus first and foremost, like he said we need to do, but what I'm saying is we need to stop denying that each and every one of us need to go through the process come on before Peter asks it two times Jesus mentions that God's that people that that, that just people could not follow Jesus where he was going next but Peter even being present when he said it so here's here's the evidence um John chapter 13 verse 33 I think it is um John chapter Jesus does say he says Little children, I shall be with you a little longer. You will seek me. He says, and as I already said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. So here's the thing. That verse right there tells us Jesus already told the Jews, you're not ready. And he tells these Gentiles and this group of people that are even believers around him, you're not ready yet. But Peter is like, hey, I've got favor with the Lord. I've been spending the most time with the Lord. I know this. I know that. So I can avoid the process. I'm going to tell you something. You know what spending time with the Lord does? It prepares you for the process. Come on. I used to, um, my pastor knows how rebellious and foolish I am. Pastor Ray, he knows how crazy I am. Because I used to just think, when he launched me out, I was like, I am going to pray and fast so much, and I am going to be so skinny, and I am not, I was just, that was just going to be the evidence of my fasting. But I was like, I am never going to have a trial. You know what? My pastor didn't even rebuke me. He just said, mijo, I love you and I'm praying for you. Right? Because here's the thing. So what I'm saying when I say that is I thought I was going to get around the process by just being so intimate with Jesus that I would never need the process. Oh, I'm just going to learn everything. I'm just going to be at the feet of Jesus constantly, and I will never have a trial. Here's the thing. You know what really proves how much I love Jesus when hell and high water are breaking loose in my life, but I still know, ooh, being at your feet and then asking you to use me to solve the problem, that's, here's the thing, that's love, that's faith, that is the blessing. Come on, I'm saying tonight and I'm talking tonight because we need to be a people that understand the process is necessary. No amount of closeness, no amount of intimacy with Jesus gets us to avoid the process. But I will say this, if you spend time with Jesus, you fall in love with him, you spend time with him, you cultivate the anointing, you get the oil of intimacy flowing between you and Jesus, you know what happens? You have a power and a grace on your life so that even when you're in the furnace, he's there dancing with you. Peter says the right things. 
Lord, why can I not follow you? I will lay down my life for your sake. Man, he said the right thing. But the reality is he was not prepared or ready to lay down his life yet. Ultimately, Peter would lay down his life for the Lord. But not now. Come on, and some of us, we get upset, we get frustrated, we're like, well, you know, I just, I, I, you don't know how many times I've heard, like, there's a call on my life, you've got to use me. Here's the thing, I'll just, I'll just be real, I'll upset somebody, but um, I'm not trying to, but I will humbly say, see if you're going to say something mean, you just say humbly before it, but um, I will humbly say, hey, uh, if you've got a legitimate call on your life, the Lord really yeah, you don't need me to bend over backwards and forsake everything God has done in my life to accommodate your call. But remember, the mission of the church, this church right here, Brother Billy, so the mission of this church, bro, is to reach people, disciple those people, and raise those people up. So, like, that's part of my call. Like, I absolutely, the Lord has instructed me to not hinder raising up of people. Not hinder reaching people. Not hinder discipleship of people. So, you know, but some people, they get, we get excited. And I, I'm not saying, you know, anyone specific. I'm saying I got excited. When I found out, when I, when I heard the voice of God tell me there was a call and there was instruction and there was promises for my life, I wanted them all right there. But I had to learn to go through the process. Come on, I was just like Peter. Actually, I hope that one day I can be, you know, like Peter, right? I'm still growing. I'm still learning. You know, there's a lot of childish things that I've had to put off. Like Paul said in Corinthians, he said, when I was a, when I became a man, I put off the childish things. Well, you know what? I've learned that, you know what? Two years ago, there was some immaturity on me. There was an anointing. There was a call. There was a blessing. But also there were things that still needed to be learned. And Peter at that moment was not ready to go. He was ready to go through the process, but in his mind, he just wanted to be a consumer. Consumer. He just wanted to be in the audience. He just wanted that servant mentality that everything's just handed to you. But when you become a child of God and you begin to walk into authority, the word says that the Lord wants to trust you. The word says if you can be trusted with little, then you will be entrusted once again with somebody else's true riches. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching better than you're helping me. But no, nah, but does it, do you get what I'm saying? Does it make sense? Like Peter was like, nah, I'm ready to like go right with you, Jesus. And Jesus is like, I don't think Jesus um, was mad about it. I don't think, you know, I'm like, you know, Jesus probably was enjoying the fact that, you know, hey, Peter does love me. But he also could see everything in Peter's heart that was just easy for Peter to ignore in the presence of God. And he wanted to change Peter from being an audience member, a pew warmer, a consumer, having this servant mentality where everything's just given. He wanted to break that off of Peter because when Peter really had that broken off of him, he would become a son who would walk in authority and who could call out devils, who could raise up the dead, who can speak the word of God and bring, sick, bring the sick to life, to health, whose shadow would heal people. Only thing my shadow does is throw shade. I've got some process. Come on. Somebody needs to say, pastor's got some process. Yes, I do. Really, the Lord was speaking to me about Peter wanting to avoid the preparation, avoid the process. But the Lord is saying, you know what? I'm preparing you right now. If you'll do the things that I've called you to do, the Lord told me, I'm like, yeah, but Lord, isn't there something else? Shouldn't I get out of John already? And the Lord is like, no, I knew what I was doing when I told you to go directly through the book of John. I said, okay, Father, I just, I trust you. This is the process. This is me having faith. This is me being obedient. And then he begins to show me how Peter wanted to avoid the process. But it is, it's very important that we get this. Again, I'm really, I'm really being hard on Peter. I hope you don't look for me up there one day and just say, hey, man, you didn't have to preach that one. But Peter was an audience member, a pew armor. He was a consumer, which is not what we're called to be in the kingdom. In the kingdom, we're supposed to be those that are producing, that are making things happen, that are bearing fruit. And, and, and here's the deal. 
I used to hear about bearing fruit. I used to hear about being like kingdom minded in this fashion. And it was very intimidating. But you know what fixed that? Intimacy with the Lord, discipleship, and the process. Now more than ever, I understand it. But we cannot be a people who avoid the process. Check this out. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, I'm legitimately almost done. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, we have um, David and Bathsheba, their son gets sick. The son that comes from their sin gets sick. And David begins a fast. And it is a very serious fast. It is definitely what we would call a solemn or a serious fast. What that means is he was eating nothing. He was taking seriously his time with worship and a prayer. And ultimately, you, you know what happened? His son died. But once he found out his son died, he ate, he worshiped the Lord, and he kept going. He ate and he worshiped the Lord and he kept going. You know what, you know what the fast that David was on did for him? It did not change the fact that his son was going to pass, but it prepared him for heaven's answer. Ever been told no by God? Are you ready to be told no by God? Here's the thing. You know what came, you know what came after that child died? Another child named Solomon who would become the wisest and richest man in all the world. So even what God takes is not without blessing. This fast is a time of preparation. This Tomorrow we'll be here again at 6.30 for an hour of prayer. It's a time of preparation. And again, it's not because we don't believe God or we think we have to bother God or we want to bug God and we're going to wear him down. And No, you know what it is? Because we're desperate for really God's answer in all of this. Because when you will spend time with the Lord, he will give you the grace, the power, and the blessing on your life to go through the process. Because there is no avoiding the process. The Apostle Paul, 14 years before he really becomes the Apostle Paul. From Saul getting knocked off his high horse in Acts chapter 9, I believe. Or is it Acts 9? 9, I think it is. And to becoming Saul, or becoming Paul the Apostle, um, it's 14 years when he really begins to walk in this blessing and victory and overseeing things. Joseph, I believe it's 14 years from being thrown in a pit to actually being raised up as a second in command. God is not afraid to take his people through the process and it's much needed. And saints, we've got to be a people that one, for one, I've, I've been preaching about loving God first. I, I want to encourage us to intimacy with the Lord, just, just being in love with Jesus, spending time in prayer, spending time in the word. I want us to be those people, but tonight I also want to remind us that that does not eliminate the process. It just makes the process bearable. Even that, the promise was that he would be where Jesus was at. The promise was that he would follow Jesus. And ultimately, as he ends his life, he does follow Jesus. He makes some mistakes in between, but that's part of the process for him. Do you realize that when Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, now this is the prayer that the Bible records as Jesus praying and droplets of blood are coming off him. Jesus is praying for real. You know what Jesus is praying? One of the things that Jesus prays in that prayer is that, Lord, the ones that you have given me, let them be with me where I'm at. He prays a prayer that he, when he's praying and blood, droplets of blood are falling to the ground, one of the things that he prays is for us to follow him and be. He's praying what Peter's asking. 
He wants it to happen, but it doesn't mean the process can be avoided. Does this make some sense tonight? Are, are we getting it? And this is why I'm saying Jesus is going to, the word of God teaches us, he is looking across the world to see where he can perform his word. In other words, where he can release Sister Christie's blessing because Christie's in obedience, Christie's on time, Christie has followed the path to get what God intends for her. Not because you're perfect and you earned it and you deserve it. He gives exceedingly abundantly, more than I could ever hope or imagine. He gives more than I could ever deserve, earn, or work, work up. But we obey because we love him. And when we love him and we obey, we walk a path that, that gets us perfectly aligned with where God is protecting us and providing for us. And in the process of getting there is the process. In the process is the process. We can't be like, well, here's the thing. We're like Peter. We don't want to go through the process. We just want, come on, there's a, there's a large chunk of the church right now that is like, just Jesus, rapture us right now. Like, forget all these other people. Rapture me right now. Forget Satan-in-law. Forget this. Forget that. Forget everybody else. Rapture me. But me, I, you know what, I, I, I don't know that everybody that I love is going to make it right now, so I better get an anointing. I can't cry, oh Lord, just take me and forget all them. I just, you know, I'm a good audience member and I just love watching you, Jesus. No, he wants to be the one that teaches us so that we will be like him and we will go out and produce like he did. He's the one that said, it is better that I go. He's the one that said, you will do greater things than these things you've seen me doing. Peter didn't even hear that when he's asking this. He's, all he's thinking about is, I just want to go right where you are. I really don't need better. I just want like the easy life with you. And you know what? I am blessed because I do not pastor a church that is stuck with just needing to be in the four walls. I do serve God with a people. Our church has been faithful to get outside these walls. And we need to go out. We need to care. But also, I want to say this. We need to go through the process because the power of God needs to be evident in these four walls. And the power of God needs to be evident when every time, and even in a greater fashion when we leave these four walls. I don't know when it should be more powerful. You know what? It should be so powerful in here on a Sunday morning because God's people are here just ready and God's people are praying for service all week. Or I don't know, should it be so powerful and so bright and burning and shining out there when we're in the, in the world ministering because it's so dark with everybody else? I don't know, maybe they're just two sides of the same coin, just the power of God everywhere we go, and it's revival and awakening and producing fruit. We're no longer consumers. We're no longer in a slave mentality. We're no longer just warming a pew, but we are those that produce. We are those that can be trusted by God. We are those that have been entrusted by God with true riches that are eternal and can't be stolen. Like I said, this is a place where revival is expected. Jesus is the one pursued. And in the process is discipleship going on. I get it that some of the things going on have been hard. Or we, you know, we've all, we're all going through some stuff. I get it that maybe you expect results already. Well, keep expecting but just because you don't see what you're expecting, that gives you every reason to keep pressing because the God we're expecting results from has never failed his people. Can somebody say amen? You know, saints, tonight as I share, I just, I, I, I pray this was a word of encouragement to you. Pointing out what I learned from the Bible about Peter in this little situation and from the Bible about what the Lord is doing right now with us. He's desiring, he's preparing us. Hi, I'm Pastor Glenn Garcia. And Joey Garcia with New Hope Ministries of Central Denver. 
And it is our great privilege to partner with you. And our mission here at this church is to reach, disciple, and raise up. You know, we encourage you to plug into a local home church. And if you don't have one, we welcome you to join us at any one of our services. Thank you for partnering with us as we come alongside you to walk you into your true purpose as it begins now. God bless you and we love you.